Think about how much plastic you use on a daily basis. Every time you get groceries, almost everything is wrapped in a form of plastic. Every time you get takeout or your large family comes over and you don't want to run the dishwasher five times, so you use plastic plates, forks, knives, and spoons. On average, every American uses and throws away 295 pounds of plastic annually, according to the Environmental Protection Agency. It may seem like most of that plastic can be recycled, but according to the EPA in 2018, only about 9% is actually recycled. The EPA has not released any more recent statistics, but new estimates by other uh, experts see rates fall into about 5%. There are many myths surrounding recycling, so I'm going to deconstruct a few for you today before moving on to the main focus of this talk, what eco-bricking is and why it is important. According to a 2022 report by Greenpeace, there are five reasons as to why plastic recycling fails. Number one, plastic waste is too widespread to collect. Plastic waste is spread across the 123 million households in America. There are systemic infrastructure issues with plastic collection because there are many different ways that plastic recycling can be collected. You could rely on a household to bring their plastics to a recycling plant, or a city could put out a collection can that goes along with the trash. Regardless of how each city or county decides to collect their plastic recycling, there is still the issue of thousands of recycling plants across the country that do not collect plastics in a standardized way. Two, mixed plastic waste cannot be recycled together. There are a bunch of different types of plastic, each, each with its own unique comp composition, which means that they cannot be melted down together. A plastic milk jug and a detergent bottle cannot be melted down with a plastic water bottle or a takeout food container. It is impossible to sort through the millions of pieces of plastic waste each year so that they can be separated by type and reprocessed. If even a single piece of the wrong plastic accidentally got into a batch, that whole batch is contaminated and deemed unusable. This is what single-handedly holds up recycling processes, and unless a uniform plastic is created and the number system is eliminated, then plastic recycling will never be effective. If somehow plastic waste were to be efficiently collected and sorted, there would still be issue number three. Plastic recycling is wasteful and a pollutant. When plastic is mechanically recycled, microplastics are created and washed into water sources. This is extremely problematic because you could be drinking microplastics and never know because they're not visually identifiable. There have already been scientific studies acknowledging that microplastics have been found in the lungs and bloodstreams in a majority of the people tested. This can cause health issues in humans as well as animals that live in or drink from contaminated water sources. Number four, recycled plastic has toxicity risks. Plastic products absorb the products or chemicals that are put into them, and plastic is inherently made with chemicals. So that means the millions of pounds of food-grade plastic created each year cannot be recycled back into food-grade plastic because it is not safe for food to come in contact with most recycled plastics. This leaves either downcycling that plastic waste into lower-value products or simply throwing it away. Five, newer plastic is cheaper and more economical. New plastic is cheaper and higher quality. It is also extremely expensive to collect, sort, move, and reprocess plastic waste in a safe manner. It will never make sense for corporations to use recycled plastics. And if corporations won't buy that recycled plastic, then why are we making it? With all of these reasons, we need to come up with more creative solutions to the plastic problem. 
The most viable solution, in my opinion, is eco-bricking. So what is eco-bricking and what does it do for the environment? I started my journey on ecobricks.org, and all of this information has been implemented by me in workshops here at BGSU. Do you remember those microplastics that have contaminated water streams and already been found in the majority of the human population? Ecobricking could help mitigate that effect. It is a way to sequester plastics, to keep them from degrading into microplastics and leaching toxins into the ground, air, and water systems. When plastics are left to degrade in the landfill, they are hit with the sun's rays and photodegrade into microplastics. This photodegradation creates greenhouse gases that contribute, albeit a small amount, to climate change. Incineration of plastic is also not viable because it releases microplastics, biphenols, and phthalates, which are big words, but those are ultimately gases that you should not be breathing. So how does eco-bricking help that? Well, it solves the issue of net surface area being exposed. Malleable single-use plastics are shoved into a plastic bottle until it forms a brick. Since the plastic is now sequestered, there is less degradation that occurs. Now, eco-bricks are not the whole solution to the plastic crisis. They just help in the short term. Plastic recycling is not going to be figured out anytime soon because of those five reasons mentioned earlier. But plastic usage is also not going anywhere. In our current market, it would be almost impossible to eliminate single-use plastics. So while these two issues are being solved, it is important to have a solution that works with the current system. And I believe that is eco-bricking. So now I'm going to teach you how to make one. You take malleable single-use plastics, like this chip bag, wash it and dry it, and then shove it into a bottle. When building bricks, you can use plastic bags, any kind of single-use packaging. Things that you shouldn't include in eco-bricks are metal and glass, because those can be recycled safely, or biodegradables, because those are compostable. So there are six steps to making an eco-brick. Number one, save, segregate, clean, and dry. Save all of the plastics that you use in a week and clean and dry them. This step is extremely important because if there is residue left on the plastics, then when they're packed into the bottle, methane can build up and it can cause the bottle to expand and burst. Number two, pick a bottle. I recommend using 20 ounce bottles because those are the easiest to work with. Number three, choose a stick. I use a fiberglass chopstick, um, but you can use anything that fits within the mouth of the bottle. Number four, cut up your plastics. Cut up plastics into smaller, more manageable pieces because that allows it to get into the brick easier and it allows more volume to be put into the brick. Number five, fill your bottle halfway and then push it down with a stick. So fill it halfway, push it down, fill it halfway, push it down until you get a finished brick. The bottle is packed tightly and there are no air pockets. You leave one to two centimeters at the top so that the cap will fit on nicely. It is super important to periodically shove down the plastics that you put in there because it will reduce air pockets and allow more plastic to fit into the bottle. After that, you have a finished eco brick. So what can you do with it? You can build things. This is a fantastic way to reuse plastics. I'm working on creating a plant potter like this one that's going to go somewhere on BGSU's campus. Depending on how much time you want to dedicate to a project, you can begin collecting your own eco bricks to use for your own project, or you can donate them to a collective that makes bigger structures. So eco bricking not only helps keep plastics out of the landfill and can be used to create great structures, it's also an exercise in mindfulness. 
It can help you figure out how much plastic you use. And then, since it's consciously on your mind, you slowly eliminate easy plastics from your life, such as that convenient plastic water bottle and plastic grocery bags. Then you can start buying more sustainably when possible. Now, it would require a lot of hard work, discipline, and money to not use any plastic anymore. And that's not what I'm asking you to do. What I'm asking you to do is be more mindful of what you buy, be responsible with your plastic trash, and use a reusable water bottle. In the long run, it could save you more money. But what am I actually asking you to do? <laughs> I'm asking you to take this information home and try it. Just try it for one week. Collect all of the plastics that you use in a week, wash them, dry them, sit down over the weekend, get comfy, and pack it into a bottle. You will be shocked at how much plastic you collect. You can help save the environment one brick at a time. Thank you.